it's nowhere. On September 11, 2001, nearly 3,000 innocent Americans were intentionally murdered. Over 1,000 soldiers have died and thousands more have been maimed or wounded. We dedicate this video to their memory and to the capture, trial, and punishment of those responsible. Please join us in a prayer or moment of silence in tribute to them. In its final report, the 9-11 Commission ignored the following significant facts and questions that conflict with that report's conclusions. Why did a third skyscraper at the World Trade Center that was not hit inexplicably collapse? Building 7 at the World Trade Center was never hit by an airplane and had no significant fire. It was 47 stories high. It was constructed of steel, yet at 5.30 p.m. it fell perfectly straight down into a small pile of rubble, just like a controlled demolition. Why did the Federal Emergency Management Agency lament that the specifics of the fires in World Trade Center 7 and how they caused the building to collapse remain unknown? Larry Silverstein the leaseholder of Building 7 who collected insurance of $7 billion is on tape saying he ordered the New York Fire Department to pull it, to destroy the building with explosives. In October of 2001, Scientific American told us that they just don't build them as tough as the World Trade Center. Considering that Meridian Plaza in Philadelphia burned fiercely for 19 hours yet never collapsed, how could the South Tower at the World Trade Center fall after burning less than one hour? How could the North Tower fall after burning only for two? How could the jet fuel have caused the collapse when the Federal Emergency Management and other government agencies have stated that most of the jet fuel was gone in the initial fireball. Moreover, how could the fires have caused the collapse at all, since recent fire tests by Cardington found that a steel building survived fires in experiments with extreme temperatures beyond the range possible with jet fuel? Since the black smoke coming from the buildings means that the fire was oxygen-starved, and could not have reached its maximum temperature of 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, and steel melts at a much higher temperature of 2500 degrees Fahrenheit, nearly 700 degrees hotter than the maximum temperature of the fire, how could cleanup crews have found melted steel in the basements? How could, days later, NASA satellite images show hot spots in the buildings that still exceeded the maximum temperatures possible. Explosives like C4, however, create temperatures of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which easily melt steel. Why did Fire Engineering Magazine tell us that no steel building has ever been destroyed by fire, that the World Trade Center investigation was a half-baked farce? Why was all of the important evidence illegally destroyed, some before the investigation began? Why was $40 million spent to investigate Clinton's sex life while only $600,000 was spent on investigating the World Trade Center fires and subsequent collapse? Why did the entire 9-11 Commission spend only $15 million while expenditures on Clinton's lies exceeded $65 million. How could the airliner's impact have caused the collapse when wind gusts from storms had at times been greater than the impact of the airliners? Neither tower was bent, nor did they creak or groan at any time. Firefighters said they seemed sound and reported that there were no fires they couldn't control. How could the building collapse at the maximum speed of gravity? 
Each floor hit should have slowed the fall. Just as if you drop a steel ball from the roof, it would fall faster without resistance. This couldn't have happened without explosives placed inside the structure. How could the concrete encased in a steel frame pan with two layers of carpet over it, riveted inside columns of steel beams, welded together in a network with steel bands, be pulverized? How could steel beams and clouds of finely pulverized concrete come shooting out of the buildings at hundreds of miles an hour, traveling all the way to New Jersey? This is only possible with explosives. The buildings fell rapidly, according to the 9-11 Commission, because the bolts, rivets, and steel framework were weakened by the fire. If so, then how could the concrete be pulverized and ejected at high speed, since the force to do that is greater than the force needed to shear the weakened steel, bolts, and rivets? How could the Twin Towers fall straight down when the damage and resulting fires were only to one corner, two sides? Only the tops of the Twin Towers should have fallen, and they should have fallen over, not straight down. In fact, the top of one tower did fall over onto Building 4, so there was no building weight to crush the floors below. So what caused the collapse of those floors? How could a hijacker find and hit the Pentagon whose flight instructor said, I'm still to this day amazed that he could have flown into the Pentagon. He could not fly at all. How could a pilot this bad have the flight controller's comment, The steep turn was so smooth, it's clear there was no fight for control going on. The complex maneuver suggests the hijackers had better flying skills than many investigators first believed. Why did NORAD fail to stop the attackers four times on September 11, 2001, three times after they knew the planes were hijacked and intent on mass murder? How could this happen when NORAD had successfully intercepted off-course and suspected hijackings 67 times during the year prior to 9-11, according to the Associated Press, on August 13, 2002. Why did Condoleezza Rice lie that the U.S. had no idea that terrorists would use hijacked airliners when Richard Cheney was commanding war games on 9-11, chasing phantom hijacked aircraft? Why were our Air Force planes diverted from intercepting the real hijacked airplanes? Isn't it too much of a coincidence that the four hijacked aircraft had only 20% of their seats filled, while all other transcontinental flights that day had 70 to 90% of their seats occupied? Why did the New York Times not publish the results of a Zogby poll which showed that 66% of New Yorkers want the 9-11 investigation reopened. This poll also found that 49% thought that VIPs in the government knew ahead of time and let it happen. Thus, the final report does or will not answer many important questions and has many inaccuracies. Yeah, here's one of the guys you can tell you I'm okay, alright? Here, hold on. You wanna call, you, you call your mother or something? reports of secondary explosions after the aircraft impacted, whether in fact there wasn't something else at the base of the tower that in fact were the coup de grace to bring them to the ground. When you're down there, Dan, you hear smaller secondary explosions going off every 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, and, and so it is an extremely dangerous place to be. And I'm surrounded by firefighters who are just working helplessly. They've had to, to suspend their rescue operation, and they're just watching a burning hulk of building right now. 
the uh, the front part of the World Trade Center has completely sheared off, as well as many of the upper floors. And every few minutes, you'll hear like a small sort of a rumbling sound, almost like an explosion sound, and another chunk of it will come flying down in the street. Uh, Rick Sanchez has been there throughout this morning for us. Rick, tell us where you are and what the latest is. Well, under that area, if you're familiar with uh, this area, uh, uh, we're West Broadway and Hudson come together uh, right at Chambers. That would put us about a block and a half away from uh, the site of where the explosion was. That area has just been uh, evacuated because uh, police have found what they describe it as a suspicious device. And they fear that it might be something that could lead to uh, another explosion. Obviously, there, there, there's a real sense of caution here on the part of police. I spoke with some police officials moments ago, Chris, and they told me that they have reason to believe that one of the explosions at the World Trade Center, aside from the ones that may have been caused by the impact of the plane with the building, may have been caused by a van that was parked in the building that may have had some type of explosive device in it. So their fear is that there may have been explosive devices planted either in the building or in the adjacent area.